Hello everyone, welcome to uh, round 2 of the uh, Neopartex Slavian tournament where we'll be taking Vanilla Hacky Slam for a spin. Very quickly, Vanilla Hacky Slam because I always wanted to play Hacky Slam and this is my second game of Hacky Slam that I've played in my N4 career. So let's just get right into the business. We'll be playing against Toha and uh, this is a familiar face on this channel. Tomek, which is Sharankar, known on this card, and he's playing Toha, the same list over and over and over again. So, if there is a list that he has basically practiced a thousand times, then this is this list. So, this will be a game of someone that practices 10,000 kicks once, so me, or one t kick down a thousand times, which is Tomek, basically Sharankar. So, <laughs> without further ado, let's just get into the list. So, we'll be doing list 2 and this is the list that we'll be doing from now on until the end of this event. And the reason for that is twofold. First of all, I kinda chickened out on the Magariba because of the tables. And I don't really felt that Magariba is good enough to win this type of event. And I wanted to push this list as far as I can take because this is my list and Magariba is Pejan's list. So, the satisfaction was not there basically. So, this is my take on Vanilla Hack Islam and Vanilla Hack Islam good stuff, right? So, we're doing a classical Gulam and Gulam uh, Decoy, which is Lieutenant options. I think this, those are the best options if you're not taking Saladin. Gulam's really good infantry, one extra command token, nothing more you want to take from them. Ice template, rifle, yeah, perfect. Then uh, we're doing Mukhtar, the good old Mukhtar with a Rafik, and we're taking one Mukhtar, I don't think the second one is necessary. Mukhtar is a really good gunfighter, but it's really good gunfighter in those specifically niche situations where you fight against mimetism and you need sort of to kill some squishy targets, you want to deny smokes, you want to shoot for smoke, and I don't think that two Mukhtars can do that. Pejan thinks otherwise, I'm not really a fan, especially since you can only do a one Rafik to them. Rafik, extremely useful, 14 point specialist with a rifle shotgun and a repeater tied to a Mukhtar, absolutely stellar piece. And we're doing Azrael because everyone is so full of Azrael and I really need an anti-armor weapon in case I run into a tag. And the idea is there, like this is a gambling machine, you can spike, like wow. Just thinking of it makes me all tingly, right? It, who cares that this is base 13, no mods, whatever. You just only need to squeeze one hit. So Azrael, a really good Vanilla Hakistan piece. Then uh, we're taking two bikers because Zuleika and Zamira are apparently really good pieces, right? With Zuleika and Zamira. I was not really uh, convinced to Zamira before this tournament, but she proved quite useful over the course of this tournament and even in this game. We're taking one Barit hacker, uh, just one because yeah, I mean, sometimes you need a hacker, and you have already. I already taking. I'm already taking two flash pulses. I mean, uh, with prepares, so one for an observer, one regular flash pulse. So I uh, like a way to stop an Achilles or a robot. It's always useful. And then we take a Liberto because why would you not take Liberto in the first place? You start the list with Liberto pretty much. And uh, again, as I said, flash pulse, and now my spins, because I always take a trauma dock in my Panoshiana if I can. The choice of taking a whip 17 instead of whip 12 doctor is just an unbrainer, right? I can heal uh, either the Azrael, I can heal the Mukhtar possibly, I can heal the Azrael, there's so many options basically. Then we have uh, Aldiabel. I really want to try Aldiabel. I think he's really superb. I thank Pejan and Tacos, for, well mostly Pejan, for recommending me to pay over the regular few day for Jabal because Jabal is absolutely stellar thanks to his continuous damage. And now uh, I'm taking Armand. I think Armand is a really, really good piece because Armand is like a mini Atalanta in some sort of ways. He's the most impactful piece that you can put as your reserve outside of Al Jabal. And he's pretty much the only hard arrow you can get in Vanilla Hack Islam. Because Nauf is theoretically better, it's a bit better at shooting against stuff that does not, well, that, um, well, it's just better at active shooting. I'm not really running math through my head, but Team Knauf is better at active turn shooting. But Nauf does not have two wounds and does not have Natural Born Warrior, does not have a Nano Pulsar. And it's much more reliant on the rest of the list competing. And you can never leave an elf standing as a reactive piece. And Armand is not exactly a stellar piece. Most of the stuff in the game just removes him because one dice is really not reliable. So even a basic heavy infantry with an HMG guns him down in a few orders. So this is not really a gear check, gear check right? 
but it's more of the fact that you can leave Armand Lemuet as a reactive piece at some point or in some niche situations where you can, for example, outrange attack diagonally through the table and then you can, you know, waste a lot of orders or even kill stuff with. So the Armand is much better at Nauf in the sense that he's much more versatile than Nauf and he's still a good enough shooter as an active piece to play a secondary role from like group 2. So I really suggest everyone to run Armand because Natural Born Warrior and Template is hell of a drag when you can't be shanked by enemy Fidei or enemy Speculus. And the extra wound it really makes him worthwhile against suicide Templators like Libero. Sure you can take a wound but you can just go prone and still generate an order. And Breaker Pistols icing on the cakes basically. Then uh, we're also taking the Ruggy Hacker. The Ruggy Hacker is there to do chaos and objectives. We'll be doing countermeasures and the countermeasures you have exclusion zone and the Ruggy does like a million cuts. So really good there. Then uh, in unmasking, exclusion zone, he can do the consoles, he can kill civilians. Really good there. And evacuation, exclusion zone again and the console. So in 3 out of 5 missions, Ruggy Hacker was a really stellar piece that I wanted to include in my list. He's competing with a Boktar, but he's much cheaper than that, so the Ragik is basically a classified machine and I'm also very happy with the performance. Overall, I think this list really clicked for me and I had a lot of fun piloting this list, even though at first I was skeptical, right? But let's get into the Toha list and this is basically Toha good stuff. I really think I already went through this list at least once, maybe even twice, but let's just go over it really quickly. Two hard pieces, uh, which is the Nicole and the Sukeul, uh, missile launcher. Both of those get mates and are extremely annoying to deal with because both of them have two wounds and the same mimetism and yeah, really, really tough to deal with. So Kel fire teams with Kaltar and the Kamel. Then we have another triad which is the Dral, Taquel and the Macau. The Dral is um, a bit objective because you can also take the, uh, well subjective, sorry. Because you can also take the Sukeul HMG for cheaper. I'm really big fan of Dral because AP, Marksman Rifle, D charges, he's much more versatile, I think. I feel like and he's also a good arrow piece, extra dodge. I think the tools that Dral brings and mine layer make him more worthwhile, more impactful to the list than the Sukel, which basically only provides HMG. And it's not exactly a Toha is starved with options to get inside of the 24 radius, right? So I'm fan of Dral, but Obviously, personal preference. We have Takel and the Macau. Takel, you know, end game. Macau, heavy flamer specialist, close combat. Not a specialist. Close combat specialist. So this is a triad that wants to get close and personal. And we have another triad which is like more of a utility triad with the four observer lieutenant, Kaltar, Macau. This is probably the weakest link of this for this list. This could probably not be a triad, and you could you know just run away with just Sukel. But it, it works for my, my friend, it works for Shankar. You have a bomb here, bomb here, which means that we have three models that are, paceable, are capable of doing the endgame on. We have a Beast Hunter with Camo, and in group 2 we have the Delegate with a Jammer, Libero and Grave. A lot of units that require very little orders, very little order investment and can get you a lot of orders back. So very solid all around Toha list, ge general purpose list. Again, we were I win the lieutenant roll. I decided to go fast because you know hacking some alpha striking, all kind of silly good, good stuff. Uh, buried here. Then uh, we have the Zamira, which is the AM guy, the Gulam lieutenant, Gulam decoy, Flash Plus, which basically gets this area and this area covered, but prevents any access from this range. I don't want to lose this Flash Plus for free, which is very important. We have the biker here, the Zuleika. First, I want to. to put her here or here, but uh, I figure that I don't want to use her turn 1 and I don't want to get her sniped from somewhere, so she's there. She's 8-6, she can get anywhere I want. Same goes with the Zamira. Uh, Azrael in the middle of the table, ready to basically go this way or this way or this way, but because Azrael is so fat it will be awkward to get him on top of the stairs or through here, which will be quite well annoying uh, later down the line. The Liberto uh, is located here, ready to go up the stairs, and the mine is covering this area with the HVTs. HVT here, HVT here, and then the HVT here. Finally, the Mukhtar is making his appearance here. And uh, this basically allows the Mukhtar to go either through this lane or this lane to contest the this sort of area against enemy hard arrow pieces, because I expect them. And then finally, this leaves only this building, which uh, the Mukhtar can't really get to, right? because it's a lot of weight. So we're leaving this building and we're putting a Gulam Doctor preemptively 
because I want to put Lemuet either here, here or here. In one of those three areas I want to put Lemuet to contest this long fire lane diagonally and try to out, out, either outrange the missile launcher if it's there or just take a good old fight against the Nicole. So this is something I already keep in mind that I know that the enemy arrow pieces will probably be on one of those three buildings, like one of four buildings. Mukhtar is able to reach three out of four, which leaves only this building which is unreachable for the Mukhtar and Lemuet will take care of that. Then finally we have the Dailami here, ready to fight for this area and Dailami will be also a very important key player. So again, and another short photo of my deployment from a different angle. Oops. And this is the deployment of my opponents. So, as I predicted, he takes these two buildings with his arrow pieces. The Sukeul missile launcher lands in this position and the Nicole lands here, covered by the Liberto on the stairs. And uh, then we have a Drawl in the middle, Takuel, Makaul, the other triad which is the Makaul, Kaeltar and Fort Sukel. So we already can see that my opponent's triad, this is a very static triad, this is turn 2 or 3 triad. So the first turn will 100% be played off of this fire team. This is the fire team that will do all of the work and will, be, and will engage into firefights with me. So I don't have to worry about this side of the table for now, I know that everything will be played off this side. And now we're starting to get into the win conditions, right? I know that I can play the Hack Islam around the Trias. I know I can play into the Drals, into Macaws, into all of this stuff because I have Camo, I have Shotguns, Dogget. I can reach to them and deal damage to them, but I cannot do that if the enemy reactive pieces are on the table. So this means I need to use the Jabel with something to kill his arrow pieces because of the mates. I first have to hit them with a conventional weapon, then Jabel can finish the work. And at this point I have to ask myself which of the two arrow pieces are more difficult for me to deal with. And Sukeul I can always smoke off, but the Nicole, because of MSV1, I cannot. This means I have to put the Algebel here, or rather I need to get the Algebel there, and I need to get the other Sukeul taken care of some other way around. So, uh, I think a lot about where to put my Algebel and I could put him outside of the deployment zone but I'm pretty sure that my opponent has a Liberto and because there's a mine here, there's a mine here, there is a jammer here, there is uh, another jammer here and then final jammer is there. This really limits the options of the Algebel that I can take. I could go this way but there are two shotguns waiting for me and Kaeltars are not worth going after. And I can never get to theirs because my opponent puts the Galter uh, on the stairs as he should be. So I decide to risk it for the biscuit because I either gonna get into the deployment zone and get some value out of the Jabal or I'm getting zero value out of the Jabal because I'm never getting into the enemy deployment zone without taking a jammer into my face. So I roll for Al here and he luckily lands there. So this is the deployment, the Al Jabal is located here, the Lemuet is taken here and the Lemuet is ready to take the fight against the Sukeo and Mukhtar is ready to make the play against the Nicole, supported by Algebel. And in my hands of my opponent there is a Liberto with a mine obviously to block the, uh, or rather prevent the Algebel from doing anything more fishy than, you know, side-siding himself. So, we get to the turn, uh, sorry, we get to the turn, I skipped myself. <laughs> uh, again, so this Amira comes around here, throws a smoke grenade there, Mukhtar goes this position engages the Nicole. It takes three or four hours because Red Fury kind of sucks at killing stuff. My opponent sticks to the end with the Nicole, which is I think a mistake because since the Algebel is there it's obvious I'm going to use him. So might as well just go prone and make me suicide the Algebel into Nicole getting more value. But Nicole stands there, takes all the shots in the from the Mukhtar in his face. It's 1-9 uh, versus 4 fighting and there's no other outcome and Mukhtar is BS but he has 9 in cover. So Nicole is taken care of and the Mukhtar promptly repeats to this position with the Rafik this this way. Then we have the uh, the other guy, thank and Lemuet takes this fight. We're just inside of 40, which makes it risky, but I have M6 and MSV, Sukel doesn't. I hit him I shoot him in two orders. First one takes the mate, second one takes Lem takes Sukel straight into the unconscious state. And with those two arrow pieces gone, I still have some orders left in the bank. This means that this guy, which is the Dailami, gets to activate and climb, move, move, move in camo and confront the grave that's located here, this cover shoot him off the board. 
because uh, the Elamis are really good and he stands there. So we killed three models, which of those two are hard arrow pieces and a grave, which is rather a good turn against Toha and we did not lose anything very importantly, which is rare in Hakeslab. My opponent opens up with a Beast Hunter play, starts moving this direction, uh, goes into base to base with the Mukhtar for a fork, I dodge, I shoot with a I template with the Rafik, dodge with the Mukhtar, in case he templates the Rafik I want Mukhtar to survive, take the shot with Lemuet. This is very important to play this fork in this kind of way, because if Mukhtar shoots on the pulsars or does anything, and the Rafik does the same, or Rafik even dodges, there is a free template on the Mukhtar. And I'd rather take hit from close combat into my face, because those are two dices. Well, it's kind of the same, but you get, you get the idea, right? I get to face-to-face -to -face roll the close combat, and I get to template for free. I don't want to do it the other way around, because this envies a template onto my face and probably kills two models. And if Mukhtar dies, that sucks, but at least it's just the Mukhtar, not the Rafik, and the Mukhtar dies. The engage takes place, the Mukhtar takes one wound because I saved the other dice, and the Beast Hunter gets removed. This again, this opens up the play with Drall, who starts maneuvering this way. Throws smoke there, uh, plays around the far Nadir, oh, sorry, plays around the yeah, Nadir with a Flaming Spear, which I don't have in my list because my opponent does not see Dragic, he expects the Nadir and plays around the Nadir, which gives even more value to the Ragik. And then finally gets to this position and gets Lemuet. And Lemuet takes his first reactive shot of the game, takes a wound, immediately goes prone. That's it, right? If this was a Knauf, he would already be dead. And it's not that I'm leaving the Lemuet to Arrow because I have like big brain or something. I run out of others, right? I run out of others and Lemuet just left standing. So Knauf would also be standing in this position and Knauf would be dead. So Lemuet, good. Now, eh. and the fire team basically spreads around. He tries to take a bomb into the draw into the Mukhtar, fails to land it, tries to tuck well it, fails, and uh, runs out of orders doing two cards, I think, two or three cards basically. So he's ahead on the points, but I have not suffered any casualties whatsoever except the Jabel, which at the end of the turn gets instantly revealed by the Chaksa, discover shot by the Liberto, Jabel takes the trade of the Liberto, we both die. So, we're f running 13 orders now, and it's time to make a play of, of our own. Libero stands up, forks, templates uh, the Taquel and the Maquel, both try to dodge, Maquel fails and just goes down, if I remember. Mm, but the, the, the Dral, the, the Delegate, blah, the Libero is stuck because of the Delegate. So we need to wait to do something other, something with the Delegate. Um, what we can do about, against the Delegate? At this point, nothing really. But we start moving the Azrael to take the fight against the Taquel. I move, 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 move. Sh shoot the Taquel. I fail to. I hit it once, but it passes the armor roll and gets it to talk over. Which leaves the Azrael there and not doing anything. So I need to figure out a way to kill both the Dral and Taquel right here and now. Because if I don't, they will keep doing cast because they are like million specialists. And uh, they also have the uh, end game, and you know I want to kill them. This is very important. This is kind of my win condition at this point. Is I need to remove those guys because there is a civilian here and civilian here. And if I remember, I had cards something to do with the civilians. So the Taquel standing there basically blocked my area of approach and prevented me from doing those cards. So Zuleika Zamira, I mean, is up to the task. She goes around this way, trying to avoid the eight-inch bubble. Then she basically makes a run for it. Uh, tanks and one endgame along the way. Leaves the bike here and starts climbing the stairs. There she is. There's the bike. There is the uh, Zamira. Climbs up. She goes and template that does, that does a fork with a shotgun or something. Tanks and endgame. Tries to take the fight against the Dral. Dral misses. I go into CC. It takes. Bear, well, it takes me uh, one face-to-face -face roll and then another Berserk. He discharges me, I Berserk him with an EMCW, we both go down. Uh, which is fine, the, the draw is gone. And we only have the Taquel left to worry about. The Liberto tries to make his way, even though the Delegate is watching him. And uh, Taquel jumps into close combat with the, the Liberto. Delegate does nothing against the Liberto, so we're stuck in the close combat. With all this I have left, I managed to land the Ragik in the exclusion zone. 
uh, somewhere along the day, I'm sorry, uh, somewhere along the day, actually, I shoot the delegate with the Lemuet or someone. Someone takes care of the delegate, nevertheless, because the Ragik, if I remember, lands without getting flash boost for his trouble. Ragik lands, does two cuts, one here, one here, and then uses the last remaining order to jump into base to base with the Macaul, which completes the capture. So we're free for me and two or free for my opponent, something along those lines. We're either tie or I'm slightly ahead, but this is irrelevant at this point. So my opponent's turn, he tries to do the circle with the lieutenant, goes all the way, oops, all the way this way, takes the fight against the Azrael, and over three orders puts a wound onto the Azrael, Azrael goes, goes prone, goes this way, kills an HVT for the card, and l runs out of orders in this position. It's up to me, Liberto, Starts up, uh, shanks the. Well, sorry, yeah. yeah. Liberto shanks the Tuckwell somewhere along the way. Liberto goes close combat against the Tuckwell because even if I die, I can kill it with Azrael. But luckily, I end up killing the Tuckwell. Then the Dailami, that's located on this building, if you remember, stands up. Stands up and takes the shot into the back of the Tuckwell with a Panzerfaust because Tuckwell is watching this way. So Tuckwell is watching the Mukhtar, Azrael, Liberto and leaves his back open to the Dailami. Dailami lands a clean Panzerfaust, which removes the Sukel out of the equation. Liberto shanks the Tuckwell, and now it's doing. Now it's time to do cards. So this is a point where it's kind of important, I have to admit, that I cheated my opponent, because I was under the assumption that I can case back any models as long as my physical is higher, which unfortunately is not the case. So this is how I played, this is how it played out, and then I will tell how it would play out the other way around. I have to do cards with my doctor to shoot a medicate at someone and heal someone. And the last card is Hakerino or something. Let us can or whatever. Uh, so I drag the Liberto, with the Liberto I drag the unconscious Tuckwell here. The medic goes down, shoots a dart into the Tuckwell, heals the Mukhtar and Ragik does the card. So this leaves me with 5 to 3 cards. Because my opponent did, yeah, my opponent did 3 cards and I did 3 and now so I did two, one, three, so something like that, basically, which g means that this is a two-point advantage in cards. But because I could not do it, and I'm not sure I could get there with the Gulam, may, may not. I only realized after the tournament that I cheated my opponent, so I, I can't be sure. I could possibly go there and land a long bomb medicat into the Taquel, maybe not. But what ended up happening is that I still have enough orders to do the card on the data scan on the unconscious, Muk unconscious Macaul, and I still have enough juice to heal the Mukhtar, which happened. So the end score would be 4 3 instead of 5 3. Apologies to my opponent, I was under the assumption that I could case back, but uh, Foxbringer pointed out at Discord that this is not the case and I cannot do this. In my opponent's final turn, my opponent had like 3 or 4 models on the table and he basically conceded because all of the cards uh, that he could do with the countermeasures after doing a shuffle so out of four cards he could not do anything so we kind of skipped his last turn and ended up the game with 5-3 in cards which was a big win for me something like 7 w I don't remember basically but it would be 4-3 which means that would be any win anyways but with one less card thanks very much everyone for watching this i hope you enjoyed it and uh, sorry for dragging it a bit too long but anyways thanks very much and hope you have an enjoyable time bye